Take your Bible and go over the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3. And then we'll read one verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians 3 and then 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. If you're happy to be in God's house, say amen. amen. It's good to be here today. It is good to see everybody uh, and that with us today. And it is a joy uh, to get to be here today. Uh, I see everybody got their call, which really you'd have just been early this morning if you wouldn't have remembered to set you. It's always in springtime that it gets you. Amen. It tells on you. Uh, but uh, I'm glad everybody got their clock set today. And if you're like me, we don't have, we don't even worry about alarm clock anymore. We just set it with our phone and expect the phone to take care of it. Amen. If it ever quits taking care of it, I'm in trouble. Is all I know to say. I'm just in trouble. Let's look at Second Corinthians 7. It's good to see you smile today. Amen. The Bible said, Mary heart doth good like a medicine. You ought to smile. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Begin to read in verse 11. Second Corinthians 3 verse 11. The Bible says, For other foundation... 1 Corinthians 3. Do I keep saying 2 Corinthians? What am I hearing? 1 Corinthians 3, Miss Bethany. 1 Corinthians 3. She's up here grunting at me here. All right, I'd cut all this out before it goes on the radio. So I don't know what to say. 1 Corinthians 3, look in verse 11. The Bible says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yes, so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Then take your Bible and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians 5. And look in verse 10. I'll give you just a minute to get there. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. The Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We uh, thank you for uh, the song service. I pray that you was honored uh, in the songs that we've sung. And Lord, that glory was brought to your name. And I pray folk were stirred in our heart today from the singing and uh, Lord, I, I pray that we would be reminded that grace is still amazing and that we were to think so and that we were to sing it as so. And Lord, I ask today that while we preach, I, I pray that you would encourage your people, but Lord, we ask that if there's one here lost, that uh, you would speak to their heart and deal with them. And Lord, that while we do preach, that you'd give us help and that from on high, uh, for, Lord, I cannot do anything without you. And I know that and I realize that. And I'm looking to heaven for my help today. And I pray that you'd come by for just a little while. Lord, we pray if there's one lost, do save them. Help the one that needs direction. And we'll give the glory for it all. For all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You'll be seated this morning. These verses that I've read and that deals with the time of the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, you realize that uh, there's coming a day uh, when every Christian, when every saved person uh, is going to stand before a holy and just God and give an account of their life that we've lived here for Him. He said, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to he hath done, whether it be good or bad. And so there's a judgment coming, and that for the child of God. Now can I say quickly that, by way of introduction, uh, that that judgment is not to see whether me and you are lost or not, or saved. Uh, that's already been determined when you knelt and you asked the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to save you and come into your heart. Uh, that was determined then. Your judgment was poured out upon Christ at Calvary uh, uh, and He took your place. Uh, 
uh, and my place. Uh, we need to understand that and get that. Hey, I understand it makes a good song, uh, uh, but I'm telling you, when I stand before Christ, uh, He's not looking for the blood. He already knows uh, uh, that I'm His. Amen. Hey, the Bible said in John 10, I am the good shepherd uh, and know uh, my sheep. Uh, John 10 again said, My sheep hear my voice, uh, and I know them, uh, and they... Uh, Follow me. Uh, hey, I'm glad today that I'm not waiting to get to heaven uh, uh, to know uh, uh, if I'm saved or not. Uh, uh, listen, little John, 1 John chapter 5 uh, and verse 13 said uh, uh, that you may know uh, uh, that you have uh, eternal life. Uh, hey, I'm glad today that I'm not waiting to get there uh, uh, to find out if I'm saved by God. Uh, uh, listen, by the Lord Jesus Christ, He's not waiting uh, uh, for me to get there to tell me whether I'm saved or not. Uh, he knows it. I know it. Uh, uh, listen, uh, you can know that you're saved. Thank God for that. But there's coming a day that lost folk are going to stand before just and an almighty God. You can look in Revelation uh, uh, chapter 20 and we find the great white throne judgment. Uh, and the Bible said in verse 11, I saw a great white throne uh, and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now, uh, listen, I really believe there'll be degrees in hell in the eternal lake of fire. Uh, uh, because he said right here that the lost, the dead, uh, are going to be judged according to their works uh, upon the face of this earth. And he said, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, uh, every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. That was me one day, but not any longer. Amen. Because I come to know the Savior, the life giver, you see. Notice that, listen, when we come to know Christ, uh, that we got eternal life. And all Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15 talks about uh, uh, is the dead, the dead. Hey, when I got saved, I got life in Christ. I'm no longer dead anymore. Thank God I'm living in Him today. And boy, I appreciate uh, the Lord for that. And so I encourage you, if you're not saved today, you need to get saved. What are you depending on to get you to heaven? I mean, what are you depending on uh, when you stand before God? Uh, uh, listen, if he did, let me say this. Uh, what would your answer be? And it ain't going to be this way, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and ask you. Uh, if you had to stand before God and he asked you why, that he would let you in, what would your answer be? Mine's I trusted Christ. I asked him to save me. I come to him. And I'm dependent on that today. Amen. I trust God's word. But I want to look today with God being our helper. Just a simple message today. I, and I'm probably not going to dig real deep. Uh, uh, but it's very self-explanatory uh, on the judgment seat of Christ. You realize that, you know, a lot of people, they live their Christian life like we're just going to get to heaven. Uh, and But we're going to get there and we're going to praise forever. Uh, and we will. But we're not going to get to sidestep the judgment seat of Christ. A lot of people act like that there's going to be no judgment uh, uh, and that scene or given uh, and that for how we lived down here. Notice what the Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, he said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every man may receive the things done in his body. So it's how we live down here in this body. It's what we've done for Christ or did not do for Christ in this body body right here. We've got a body that we live in uh, down here and it's in this body that we can serve Christ or choose not to serve Christ. Notice in the text verse here that every man's work shall be made manifest. Our work is going to be made manifest. Number one this morning, uh, uh, can I say that when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, uh, that first of all it's a revealing day, ain't it? It reveals some things. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it just won't reveal some things. Uh, it will reveal all things uh, about our life spent here for Christ of what we done and did not do. And we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We can't escape that. Uh, we must go through that. Can I tell you that it's during this time uh, uh, that the works, uh, uh, the truth of our works uh, 
is going to come out. I should have known that we were probably not going to shout this out this morning. Let's go back and sing about what a day that'll be and we'll have a time, amen? Uh, Listen, uh, what a day it's going to be. It's going to be a great day when we get there, but we've got to get through this first. I want you to understand something. The truth on this day uh, uh, is going to come out. He already knows the truth. Can I tell you that? God knows the truth about your life. God knows why you do what you do. But do you realize that truth is going to come out on that day, the honesty and everything, uh, uh, the motive. I'm, I'm real big on, on motives. Motive is what causes you to have an action, you know. Uh, we call them locomotives, don't they? They've got action to them. Our motive is what drives us uh, and makes us go to this. Listen, whether our works are to be seen of men, uh, Uh, or or whether we do it to exalt ourselves, or whether we do it that he might get glory out of our life, whether anybody else knows about it. You know, he he tells us over in the book of Matthew chapter 5, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I had a preacher the other day text me from over North Carolina. He says, listen to you on the radio this morning. He said, you do some good preaching. And I sent it back and I said, any good preacher? I said, I appreciate the kind words. I, and I sent back and said, any good preaching is because of the Lord. I know me. I mean, I know me. I know what I am. I know what I'm made up of. I, I know the dust that I came from. I, I know that I'm low down and sorry most of the time. I, in my heart and in my mind, I feel that way. I, I'm still amazed that God can use me. Hey, I'm telling you, when you think God can't do anything I, without you, you've already messed up. This thing was going on before I came. If Jesus don't come back anytime soon, it'll be going after I leave here. It'll still be going. But while we do, what we do comes out, our motive comes out. Why I've preached the way that I've preached all these years. Why Sunday school teachers have taught lessons that they've taught. The way you've raised your house and raise your children is going to come to light. The motive and desire to uh, uh, have your home right. I think there's people, they, they want their, their home right because the preacher tells them it ought to be right. I'm going to tell you this morning, you need to have your home right because God says it should be right. And there's joy and happiness in a home that's right. Now, I'm just telling you, if you want to do it because I tell you to, you help yourself and and it'll still be good. But friend, when your desire is to please God in your home and have your children living right, you say, listen, you make them live right as long as you're at your house. Amen. Twist our ear. (laughs) I mean, you can do it now. It may get tough and it may get rough and you may have to do some things you don't want to do. But when they're living under your roof, you can make them do what you want to. I talked to a daddy the other day about that. He said, I hate to keep using this, this whole thing about why you're under my roof. Uh, but he said, he's under my roof. And he's going to do uh, what I tell him to do. Amen. You may not agree with that, but I believe that's a book this morning. Now, when they're old enough to go get a job and go out on their own, they want to do what they want to do, you still instruct them. And you ought to still try to make them do right. Amen. But notice that it's a revealing day. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For that day shall declare it, and it shall be revealed by fire. Three times he says something right here. Manifest means to be brought to light. Declare it's going to show it, and revealing it is showing us something that was unrevealed. Something that was hid. Do you know that some people think they've got things hid in their life right now uh, and, and, and uh, only they know. But I'm going to tell you, there's coming a day when those things that are hid uh, are going to be revealed. I'll go ahead and deal with them now. There's some stuff I don't understand. I, I don't know how much is going to be revealed at the judgment seat, especially when we deal with things down here. I don't understand all this. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I, I, but I do know this, that it's going to be in our work or our lack of work. Because that's what he tells us. Every man's work shall be made manifest. What we've done. 
Now notice how he tries it. It's revealed, but notice how it's revealed. He said, because that shall be revealed by how? By fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You know, most of the time when you look in, in the Word of God, you find that fire is judgment. A lot of times it's judgment. And he says he's going to reveal it by fire. I mean the holy fire of God. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you look and he talks about what right here. He said if any man's work about on. But what does he talk about? What does he talk about that's laid on that foundation? Been built on that foundation. That gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. What lies through a fire? What lies through a fire? Well, gold, silver, and precious stones. As a matter of fact, when you apply fire uh, and that to gold, silver, and precious stone, all that does uh, is make it more pure. I mean, you put the heat to gold, silver, and precious stone, it's just going to bring the impurities out and it'll be more pure uh, uh, than what it was. It finds out what it was. You want to know how much gold is in something? You've got to throw the heat to it. You know how much silver is in sun? you got to throw the heat to it. And the more you throw it on it, the more the impurities will come out of it. Would you say that Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you think they were living for God prior to the time that the king threw them in the furnace over there? Well, we know they were. We know from Daniel chapter 1 they were living for God. We know by Daniel chapter 3 that they were still living for God uh, because they would not bow themselves uh, and that uh, uh, unto the, uh, uh, the, the, the statue, uh, uh, the figure that King Nebuchadnezzar had made, they would not bow under no circumstance uh, and was willing to give their life for God. I would dare say that those boys was living for God. But yet they were still cast into the furnace of affliction. You ever think about that? That the more they serve God, it just got hotter and hotter. I mean, listen, they were standing over there and we oh, we got to talk about this. Now, we're not going to bow. And actually, all three of them huddled up, making up their mind and saying, it don't matter what happens, we're not going to bow. And you know, first they got accused, didn't they? They got accused before the king. You know, a bunch of them Chaldeans come over there and accused them and said the Jews wouldn't bow. So the heat's already getting turned on just a little bit. And the king says, you know what, if you'll just go ahead and bow, said, uh, you know, everything will be good, it'll be well, uh, and they wouldn't do it. Uh, and they told the king as so much as that. And so, I mean, the pressure just gets turned on a little more and more. Now they've really got to make their stand. <coughs> and so he said, okay. And the Bible said that the king's visage was changed uh, uh, against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and he said to heat the, uh, the, the furnace one seven more times uh, than it was wont to be heated. And as a matter of fact, the Bible tells us how hot that it really was uh, uh, that the men that threw in uh, Hananiah, Ezra, and Mishael, uh, it killed those men and just throwed them in. And when that old wicked king looked over into the furnace, he said, did we not throw three in? He said, I see four men loose walking in the fire and the fourth is like unto the Son of God. No, he's always with us in the furnace of affliction, ain't he? I, I really think that's what that story is all about. Uh, not only does it teach us to stand, not only does it help us to stand uh, when nobody else will, but it teaches us uh, uh, that in the heat uh, uh, of the moment, in the heat of the battle, standing for Christ, uh, uh, that friend, he will always uh, be present with us. I really think that's what that scripture teaches us. And so they come out and, uh, and the king rolled over to the edge of the furnace uh, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said, come out of there. So they just come walking out. And the only thing that had burned off on them was their, their, uh, their bounds, wasn't it? Remember they were bound up and thrown into the furnace? And the Bible said that even the smell of fire hadn't passed on them. I don't think there's one of us went home and got around that fire last night. It didn't smell like smoke by the time we got home. It's the furnace of affliction we go through down here sometimes brings out our impurities and shows us what we need to do. But when we get over yonder, it's going to tell the truth of what the matter was. Notice it's talking about building on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to start on that foundation of Him, but then we begin to build on Him and our motives and our desires and our work that we do for Him. 
that gold and that silver and that precious stone, listen, it's not going to burn up. It's just going to remain. I, and that work will stay there. I, but that wood, hay, and stubble is what's going to burn up. There's no worth to that. It's a revealing day. Kind of makes me nervous a little bit. I'm just going to be honest with you. It kind of makes me nervous a little bit. I, I get very introspective sometimes. And I have to be very careful with that because if all you're doing is looking inward all the time, you'll drive yourself crazy. But I'm going to tell you this morning, you better be looking on the inside while you do what you do. I mean, you, I mean one, are you doing anything for Christ? I'm getting ahead of myself right here with this one. But I'll be honest with you, I'd hate to get to heaven and stand up there and he ain't got nothing to try because I didn't do nothing. Hey, some people are going to heaven that way. They ain't got nothing to show. Kind of like that one that, uh, well, let, let, let me move on right here and I'll deal with this here in a minute. I'll just deal with it now. In Matthew chapter 20, take your Bible and go to the book of Matthew chapter 25. I didn't intend to deal with all this, but I'll deal with it this morning. Matthew 25, if it does deal with the judgment of the nations, of those nations, how they treated Israel during the tribulation period. I understand that. But in Matthew chapter 25, uh, let's look in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them five other talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received the one, or received one, went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with him. You know, there's always a reckoning day. That's what I'm talking about right here, is that reckoning day. There's always a reckoning day. See, the Lord just didn't leave us here to get saved and didn't do nothing. So, verse 20, And so he that had received five talents come and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord uh, said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now let me stop right here. I want you to notice that he gave some five, gave one five, and gave another two. So they took what one had more than the other. You ever just seen some people that uh, has more ability to serve the Lord than you do? For whatever reason it was, they have more abilities to serve the Lord than you do. They're better at something than you are, or they can do more than you can do. You ever seen that? But notice right here, one got five, one got two. The one that got five put that to work and got five more. But the other that had two, he put them two to work and got two more. What I'm trying to get you to see is he used what was left for him to use. Whatever you've got in serving the Lord, do it. Do it. Whatever God's given you to serve, whether it's in your home, whether it's on the job, however it is, I, I mean just serve God to the best of your ability. You say, well, listen, here can do more than I can. Don't worry about what they're doing. What are you doing? What's God left you to serve Him with? So then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the earth. And lo, there thou hast that is thine. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. 
Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. You know what he said? You should have took it to the bank. He said, you should take the bank, let it gain interest, I, and at least when I come back, I, I would have had more than what I left with. But he said, I left you with this, you've buried it in the ground, and not done anything with it, and I've not got any more out of it since I left it with you. Sometimes I wonder how God feels about me. Am I that way? For some people that day, uh, for all of us, it's a revealing day, but for some, it'll be a rejoicing day. Because we'll be like those that had five and had two, and he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Ain't that what you want to hear when you get to heaven? I do. I'm not sure everybody, you know, we talk like we're all going to hear, well done and good and faithful servant. I don't think everybody's going to hear that. I'll deal with that here in a minute. But I'm going to be honest with you, when I get there, I want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Notice what he said right here. He said, every man's work shall be made manifest. It's going to be declared. Look in verse 14 of the text scripture. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. It's a rejoicing day. We get before Christ and he judges us. And listen, we, he says, here's what you've done for me. The fire tries that thing. It all comes out on the honest side. I, and listen, our motive was right. Our desire was right. Our work was right. And he said, you shall what? Receive a reward. I want you to look in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians 9, look, look in verse 25. Well, back up to verse 24, excuse me. Verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So, that, so run that ye may obtain. What are we going to obtain? The prize. He said, when you're serving Christ, he, and this is the allegory, he said, when you're, you know, it's a race. Your Christian life is a race. He said, run it that you'll receive the prize. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are corruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my, under my body, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. That incorruptible crown that the Apostle Paul is talking about right here. He is talking about, he said, you run and you run in this body. Uh, and he says, you strive for the mastery. He said, those that strive are temperate. They have self-control of, of what they're doing. And I believe that incorruptible crown is for somebody that knows how, how to keep their body under control. He says, I'm going to get an incorruptible. He said, I'm running to get an incorruptible crown. You know, we are to bring our body under subjection, ain't we? You know, I've told you this before. I thought, I really did when I was a young Christian, I thought the older that you got, the easier it was. I mean, I know I'm just 46 years old, going on 47. I understand that. But I have learned, I, listen, it's not easier. Now, I'm not battling the same things that I was battling at 20 years old. You ought to have some victory over that stuff. I mean, I'm not battling the same thing that I am when I was at 30 years old. You ought to have some victory over that stuff. But I'm still battling. And I'm still battling my flesh. And so we bring it under subjection. You know what? The Lord Jesus knows exactly what it's like to be in this body. He knows exactly what it's like to bring it under subjection. He knows what... Are you listening to me this morning? Some of you are going to miss out on the incorruptible crown because you don't know how to bring your body under subjection. And bring it under mortification. And listen to me. Listen to me this morning. I want, you, I want you to listen. We're in this body. And if we mess up, get up, knock the dust off, and keep on serving the Lord. Don't water in the dirt. Don't decide that's where you're going. Well, I've messed up. I'm not any good for the Lord. No, get up, knock the dust off, and keep going. 
Not that I'm looking to mess up, not that I want to mess up, but I'm liable to mess up. Just get up, knock it off, and go on. Say, Lord, I'm sorry that I messed this thing up. But he said they'll receive a reward. James said this, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The crown of endurance. Revelations 2 put it like this, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. That is the martyrs and, and the enduring crown. And I really believe that folk will get. You realize that there has some, there has been some. Let me ask you this morning. How many of us would go to the stake? How many of us would go and embrace the burning stake, uh, singing, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and wait for him to set us on fire? How many of us would do that? Oh, Mark would like to think he would, but I know, oh, Mark, I ain't sure what he'd do. You read Fox's book of martyrs and you'll find out that there was men and women that went to the state and died. They drawed and quartered them. They drowned them. They done everything to them. Drug them through the uh, middle of the streets with horses. I'm going to tell you what, they're going to have a crown over yonder. We think that we suffer. Them people suffered, man. Second Timothy chapter 4, Paul said it like this, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Paul said, I have kept, I fought the fight, I have finished my course, I have kept, I have done what I was supposed to do. He said, there will be a crown of righteousness laid up for me. And he said, not for me only, but for all those that love his appearing. I believe not only for those that are being faithful, but man, that we just love his appearing. Going to love to see him coming. You know, it talks about, uh, in the book of Little John, I, I, is it, I'm going to go over here. I, I remember reading it. I didn't. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. I think, I think it's in in third John might, might have been second John second John uh, verse 8 he said look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward I'm determined today that me and you could get a partial reward instead of a full reward you know, people's done right in their Christian life and then they've just messed it up, never finished it out. You ever seen that with people? They've done right for a while. I believe their motive was right. But for whatever reason, something messed them up. They, they got off track. First Peter chapter 5 talks about the crown that if I do my job, he said, The elders which are among you, I exhort him also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly not of filthy lucre, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready man, neither being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Do you realize that when, when, when I stand before God, I'm going to give an account of how I pastored this church? I mean, you're not going to give an account for that. I'm going to give an account for that. I'm going to give an account for what was preached from right where I'm I've stood in the same place for almost 20 years. I've stood right here. Even after we remodeled the church, none of this changed. I'm still standing in the same place. I know that don't matter. I understand that. But what I'm trying to get to the point is that I'm going to give an account for what was preached. I'm going to give an account for how I treated y'all. I'm going to give an account for how I tried to instruct I, I, and, and bring things about. I'm going to give an account for every bit of that. 
I'm going to tell you, I hope it's all good. I hope when I get there that I receive that crown. I, I listen for I've done my job right. I hope that when I get there it's that way. Because I'll be honest with you, and you can ask my wife, there, there, there's, a lot of time, there's a lot of things that, that I don't take serious. Man, I looked at that clock and it said one o'clock. I thought, my soul, I know I ain't been preaching that long. <laughs> I thought, man, I'm going to have to quit. <laughs> Scared me to death look back there. There's a lot of things I don't take serious in life. But you can ask her. But pastor in this church I take serious. I do because I understand what, what he talks about over there, what Peter talked about as one that watcheth for ye souls. It'll be, it, it, it'll be a day of rejoicing for some people. Number three, it's a revealing day. It'll be a rejoicing day for some, but it'll be a day of remorse for others. You come back and you look at what the Lord himself through the Apostle Paul had to say right here. He said, if, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, I'm glad we're getting in. Amen. We all heard of shouted right there. Getting in. Getting in. I mean, listen. I, I said right here, He Himself shall be saved. Uh, yes, so as by fire. I mean, the works that we've done. Listen, our works is not going to get us there. And, and listen, it don't keep us safe. But since we got saved, we ought to have some works for Christ. For some, it'll be a day of remorse. That is a sorrow with a sense of guilt. Or a gnawing pain with regret. Have you ever regretted anything? Oh, I have. Man, I've regretted things that I've said. You ever regretted that? You ever said words and then, man, you automatically, you instantly regret that you said it. <coughs> Brother Jeff talked about that <coughs> this morning, Sunday school. But there's been times I've said things and then come to find out that I've regretted them. Oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. You think about it and you dwell on it and so I shouldn't have said, or I shouldn't have done that. And you regret things. You know, some things you just can't go back up and undo because it's done too late. I think there's going to be for some that when we stand before Christ at the judgment seat and, th and th our works are tried by fire, he said, we'll suffer loss. Now, as I studied this, to lose something, you, you had to know that you were either going to get it or you had it. Right? If you suffered the loss of something, you either knew you were going to get it or you had it. How, how do we suffer loss right here? There, there, there's two trains of thoughts that I had as I said this. One, we'll be seeing others in what they get. I believe we'll all be there. Now, yeah, I, I can't prove all that, but I do know this that I believe we'll see others because we talk about them 420 elders over in the book of the Revelation chapter 4. The church is standing around. We praise together. We worship together and I believe judgment's going to be together. And you can throw that out. I can't prove all that but I can show you the principle of it. But I kind of wonder if we're not standing in the background and we're watching what others get and, and as the Lord says, well done thy good and faithful servant and we get up there and, and there's nothing there. You know, I preached a message one time of what's left standing in the ashes. I kind of wonder about that about old Mark sometimes. I do. I'll be honest with you. I kind of wonder what will be left standing in the ashes when it's all said and done. And then I kind of wonder if the Lord just won't tell us what we've lost. I kind of think that may be the way it's going to be. That he may just tell us what we've lost. But nonetheless, we suffer loss. Are you, are you preaching this preacher to get me? I, I'm preaching this so that you'll understand that there's coming the day you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of your Christian life from here. The lack of our work, the type of our work is going to be brought Now, some people may be just satisfied to get in. 
I would want to know about your desire at that point. You know, when the, and I'm going to use this as another example. Some of y'all heard me talk about this in the past month or two. Really, as we talk about buying this radio station, my motive comes into play right here. It really does. I'm going to be honest. As your pastor, I look at my motive of why do we want to buy one. Do I want to buy one that I can brag that we own one? I mean, I think, I think about it. Maybe I don't think about it, but I do. You know, I go to preacher's fellowship sometimes and they always talk about what they've done and what the Lord's doing and what their church is up to. And I think, well, I could go tell them, we're on radio station, boy, the gospel on there. Lord, is it my desire that we put the gospel out here in Athens, Tennessee? What would be your desire for us to have one? So you look at a lot of motive. I'm going to tell you, some, some days I do look at my motive more than I do others. But I think it plays an important part, especially in the position that I'm in. Because I could get the church headed in a direction I, that we don't need to go. If my motive is wrong and my desire is wrong and this is something God don't want. Listen, I'm still praying about that thing. I just want to be right with the Lord. Psalms 96, the psalmist said this, Before the Lord, for He cometh, for He cometh to judge the earth, He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with His truth. Everything we do is put up against His truth. It's put up against that. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, as it deals with the Lord's Supper, toward the end of that, he says this in 1 Corinthians 11, for if we would judge ourselves, I think if we would judge ourselves, that would help the judgment seat of Christ when we get there. What are we doing and why are we doing it? To please Him or to please ourselves, or to have glory and honor of men, to brag on. Listen, if I'm going to brag, I want to brag on him. I'm telling you, when that fellow sent me that text the other day and said, you've done some good preaching, I'm like, man, it wasn't me. And I've heard this old boy preach before, and he can preach. I mean, he can preach. He preaches all the time. He's an evangelist, and that boy preaches all the time. He's on radio all the time over North Carolina and South Carolina. He's over there, and, and, and he preaches all the time. And I could have let that just... <laughs> when somebody that you kind of hold in high esteem sends you something like that. I just want my motive right, my desire right, my work to be right. And my work to be faithful. Let's bow our heads this morning.